If you look up Netflix, it says looking for Netflix, this app won't work for your device. It already comes built in with Netflix and yo, it actually works. You just tap on here and look at that. You have access to Netflix and you can watch whatever you want. Yo, look at this guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. I got a question for you all. What's the one most important feature that any car stereo should have? Hmm? Hmm? Wrong! It's the volume knob. If you didn't say volume knob, unsubscribe right now. Well anyways, this is the Max Speeding Routes Q96 audio video receiver. And it's got a lot of cool features. Yeah. All right, so right out the box, we hit a couple of prying tools to take apart your dashboard, a microfiber cleaning cloth, a pair of mounting brackets, the main wire harness, and the RCA harness. This is gonna allow you to hook up a gaming console if you want. <laughs> USB ports, in case you don't wanna use the ones on the face of the stereo. Universal rear camera input, a GPS antenna, some mounting screws, and finally the head unit itself. Oh, and some paperwork as well. <laughs> on the front of the stereo, we get a built-in microphone, a little reset button, the volume knob, a must-have feature, two USB ports. The top one is for fast charging, and the bottom one is to connect your phone or USB, and the auxiliary port. And on the back, you'll notice that there's a fan right here. Over here, we have a HDMI port. This is for video out, so you can't plug in a HDMI and show something on this screen. The main wire harness will go up here. These are various connectors for the other plugs, radio antenna, and GPS antenna. All right, so obviously, one of my most favorite features on this head unit is the volume knob. I mean, look at it. You could easily turn up and down the volume. The radio in my Honda Prelude is all touchscreen, and I find it a little dangerous because typically when I change the volume, I gotta glance at the screen to make sure I'm actually tapping on the volume icon. I mean, you shouldn't be taking your eyes off the road, right? Especially while you're driving. But yo, let's check out this display. It's really nice. So up top, you can actually slide down and you can access this menu from anywhere. We got the multitask right here. You can see all the apps open, clear all, boom. Now in the center, this actually works. When you have the antenna plugged in, this actually goes up. If you wanna switch it to kilometers, just tap and hold. If you wanna go back to miles per hour, tap and hold, bam. This is gonna be your music player if you have a flash drive. And this is your radio. On the left-hand side, we got navigation. Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, music, which is gonna be the same as your USB flash drive, Bluetooth calling, and right here, you can access extra apps. And you know what that means, right? That means that you have access to the Google Play Store. Woo! So if you've been living under a rock, the Google Play Store is pretty much the app store for Android devices. So you can download any app as if this is actually a tablet or like a smartphone. So I've already installed a few apps on this head unit but it already comes built in with Netflix and yo, it actually works. Because if you go into Play Store and try to manually download Netflix, look at what happens. Oh wait, another cool thing I wanna show you guys, you can hook up a keyboard to this thing. Look, it's lit up, what the heck? And look, if I type, what? It says looking for Netflix, this app won't work for your device. So most head units that are Android based, you won't be able to download Netflix but somehow Max Speeding Routes has the app already installed on their device. And you can just tap on here and look at that. You have access to Netflix and you can watch whatever you want. I also tested out HBO Max, that works. YouTube also comes pre-installed into this head unit and Crunchyroll works too, if you're a big anime fan. The apps that don't work is Disney Plus and Hulu. Let's check out navigation. It actually worked without your phone plugged up. In my opinion, this isn't the best looking maps. I would rather use Google Maps or something. Tap on this. Speed play, you could connect CarPlay or Android Auto. If you're not familiar with CarPlay, all it does is access your phone's navigation and music player, and you can even make calls through this head unit. And if you're an Android user, same thing. You get the same split screen like Apple CarPlay, and these are all the apps available through Android Auto. There's a few other apps that will work on Android Auto and CarPlay. You just gotta have it installed on your phone, and it'll come up on the screen right here. Next, we got music from your flash drive. You can get a flash drive and just plug it in right here. Tap down here and you can see all your songs, artists, okay, and albums. You can create folders and you'll notice the music player is right here. You can tap on it to go back. Yo, this sounds super good. 
We're only halfway in. This is pretty loud enough. And in case you were wondering, you don't have to use these two ports right here. You can install these to the back of the head unit, but the weird thing is only the Android phone and flash drive will work on those USB ports. For some reason, you can't connect the iPhone to the rear USB port. Pretty weird. Here we got Bluetooth calling. It'll pull up your settings. If you tap down here, this is the whole radio interface. Tap it again. And it's RDS, so it does show the station information and song playing, but it's just like up here in this little text. Now onto the really cool stuff, the apps. There's plenty of apps in here. Auxiliary. You can use the auxiliary cord to listen to music. Just plug it up right here. And this is actually how you hook up a PlayStation or Xbox to this. Now this head unit uses RCA connectors, but you could get this HDMI to AV converter and it's gonna convert your HDMI to RCA plugs and then you can hook it up to this head unit. This is gonna show you your Bluetooth settings, Bluetooth music if you're playing music wirelessly. Car info, this is something you're gonna have to contact Max Speedrides about. You'll send them your car information and they'll send you like some sort of update file. So it'll pull up whatever information about your car. This head unit comes pre-installed with Google Chrome, the web browser, CPU fan. This is actually the first head unit I've ever seen with a fan. One big feature about this head unit is DSP, which stands for Digital Signal Processor. It's pretty much a super advanced version of the equalizer. So you just go into the equalizer and you can make all kinds of adjustments. The DSP settings is pretty much gonna allow you to maximize your audio quality. DVR, this is for your front and rear camera. You can see both, just tap on one. That's the rear view camera. And you can actually switch it right here. Boom, and that's the front camera. Hey. File Explorer, you could access the files on this head unit and in the flash drive. Gallery for your images, Google. Oh, okay, I guess it's just a built-in app for Google directly. GPS monitor, so if you see this moving and whatnot, then you know that your GPS is working. Boom, next page. These three are your navigation apps. Mirror settings, this is pretty much just gonna mirror your phone onto the head unit. And I gotta say, this is probably the worst head unit I've tested, and it doesn't do the mirror that good. So I definitely don't recommend using the mirror setting. <laughs> Music, that's for your flash drive. My car, I'm not too sure what this app is about, but again, you're gonna have to go through Max Speeder Routes and have them help you set this up because there's really no documentation on this. Netflix is pre-installed. I guess they want you to watch movies while you're chilling in the car. And here's the Play Store. You're gonna be able to download any app pretty much. Icon to your radio. You get a screensaver if you just don't wanna see nothing on your screen. That's what you get. Right here, we got your settings. You go down to car settings and assembly. And this is where you'll do your main setup for steering wheel control, enabling your front and rear camera, settings for the backup camera, speed play. That's gonna be the same as this icon right here, which is for CarPlay and Android Auto. Lastly, Spotify video. This is gonna be videos on your USB. Wallpapers, you can change your backgrounds. You can probably even upload your own, but to be honest, this background is already pretty nice. And lastly, we got YouTube. Woo! Okay, now, my final thoughts on the uh, Max Speed Routes Q96 head unit. Do I think it's worth your time and money? Let's find out. Well, since you made it this far into the video, I gotta let you know, before I even tested this car stereo, I freaking hated it so much. Like, it was super frustrating. The most frustrating thing about this head unit is the fitment and installation. If you look on the side here, you'll notice that I have a couple of markings. And I had to modify my dash kit just so that this could be mounted into the car. And when I finally got it installed, it wasn't until then that I realized my trim piece for the stereo doesn't fit. I thought it was because of the volume knob, but no. The screen itself is the perfect size, but there's a little border that goes all the way around the stereo. And that's what makes it too big. And so I can't use this trim piece. And since I can't use this trim piece, it leaves a really big gap all the way around the head unit. Another issue I had with the installation was hooking up the wires because sure you get this little user manual that kind of shows you an uh, overview of the head unit, but there's nothing about the wires and what does it go to. So I had to dig around and I found it on their Amazon page and that's how I was able to hook up the RCA cables and everything else. Sorry, it's about to storm over here. <laughs> when I was hooking up the front and rear camera, again, lack of documentation, they give you this piece of paper that looks like it was literally just 
printed on a piece of paper and the instructions are very vague. They kind of point you in the right direction, but they don't explain to you the different options and what option you would select in order to enable the cameras. So if you're thinking about getting the Max Speed Routes front and rear camera, be prepared to cry. <laughs> Another thing I dislike about this head unit is the USB ports on the front of the screen. I think it's an eyesore. I mean, maybe they could cover it up with some grommets, but even then, if you plug something up right here, now you have something just poking out at you and it's just, it just doesn't look good. Also, I mentioned this earlier in the video, but even though you plug in the USB ports in the back, for whatever reason, the iPhone has to be plugged up to this port. Otherwise, Apple CarPlay is not gonna work. I mean, yeah, you can use wireless Apple CarPlay, but I just like having my phone plugged up and charging up. But if you can get past the installation, the uh, gap around the stereo, and you don't mind doing some research on your own, just in case there's some missing information like I had to deal with, I think this is a really good head unit. For $200, you get wireless, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. If you look at popular name brand head units like Kenwood, Pioneer, Sony, Alpine, if you wanted wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, the starting price for that feature starts at about $500. I like the fact that this is an Android operating system, which means it has the Play Store and it comes pre-built with Netflix and YouTube. Steering wheel controls, it's a little bit of a headache to set up, but if you could get it wired up, it works. You get DSP, digital sound processor, which is the advanced version of an equalizer. It can read your speed using the GPS antenna. You can hook up a game console and play games in your car in case you need more reason to hang out in the garage for a long period of time. <laughs> oh yeah, and the user interface is really nice. It's actually really unique. I like the color scheme, purple, black. It's really high quality design with really nice shadows. So it definitely has its own unique character to it. I've never seen another design like this interface. And most of all, my favorite thing about this head unit is the volume knob. Even though this head unit looks really ugly sitting in my car because of the big old gap around it, I really like the fact that I could just turn up and down my volume almost instantly. So overall, you get a lot of features in this head unit for a really budget-friendly price. But all right, guys, I hope I helped you make a very good decision. I don't make these reviews to just sell you something. I make these reviews to show you what to expect if you were to buy it. So hopefully I covered everything you wanted to know about this head unit. If I didn't, feel free to leave a comment down below because someone else might have the same question. All right, guys, thanks for dropping by. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you on the next one. Deuces.